Welcome back, Gundam guys and Gundam gals. Patrick Grade here from GGInfiniteNews.com. Today I'm very happy to bring you the second and final part of the review for the Master Grade Banshee Gundam. Due to some technical difficulties, this video took a bit longer than I thought to put together, but I've got everything all ready now, so let's take a look, and here we go. Alright, so here's a look at the Banshee Gundam in Unicorn Mode. I think the new weapons and the arms add quite a bit to the silhouette of the figure giving it a pretty nice bulky image on the front and the side. And the new V-fin also adds a lot to the design of it as well. And seeing the gold areas poke through or on the top here is looking pretty nice. Definitely adds a pretty significant visual flair to the pretty plain design otherwise. As far as articulation, it's pretty much the same thing as all uh, Unicorn to Gundams before it. Decent leg articulation. Not much there at the knee. Side to side swivels just fine. Just be careful not to loosen up the little clip on the back and make the torso all floppy. The arms can go up quite a bit, and of course spin 360 if you want them to. The extra weight of the weapons on the arms doesn't seem to affect the elbow very much, so some good strength there. And the head can still spin 360 if you want it to. So articulation is pretty average, I guess, but if you're used to the articulation on Unicorn Gundam, you know, nothing's changed. The top definitely weighs a lot more than it did before with the extra weight of the weapons. So the strength of the knees is pretty important. I noticed a day or so after building the Unicorn Gundam, I had some weird issues with the knees. They weren't holding very well. So I took it apart and looked at it, and uh, there are some stress fractures in the plastic. And I'll show that off in a little separate clip here so you can see what I'm talking about. And it seems to be kind of common on the Unicorn Gundam, because I went to take apart my other Unicorn Gundam, and one of the two knees had the same issue going on with it, same place. So um, if, you, if you have real floppy knees, uh, real loose, then there's probably a little stress fracture down inside the inner frame. So I guess it's kind of an issue with the, the mold as a whole, and not specifically the Banshee Gundam. So just watch out for that. So now much to talk about in the Unicorn mode, I guess. Looking nice. Pretty solid. The Unicorn Gundam ankles are always a little loose. If you get them off center, they can have a tendency to flop forward or backwards. So just be careful in posing it to make sure that you have the gravity centered on the ankles pretty well. Otherwise, you might tip over. So aside from the differences in the arms and the upper chest and head. There really isn't anything else to talk about as far as new things going on with the Banshee Gundam. Let's go take a look at it in Destroy Mode, and I'll be right back. So here's the Banshee Gundam, a few minutes later transformed into a Destroy Mode. As always, the transformation for the Unicorn uh, Mold is a little difficult. The actual transformation itself is not all that hard, it's just getting everything to stay in place once it's transformed. Especially in the crotch area. Uh, the front part here is released and knocked back inside. And the hips can come loose, and it's, it's a little finicky there in the in the hip area. So just be aware that can be sometimes frustrating to get everything in place and set there. Um, and also the torso, the little slot in the back is hard to stay in place as well. That's why there's this extra movement here in the upper torso. But the problems with the transformation aside, I think the destroyed mode Banshee is looking pretty cool. And I noticed on the previous clip I had the legs reversed on the wrong side. So if you notice that, don't get mad at me. I changed it now. Here's a look at the arms. They're both looking pretty nice here with the extension and the extra bulk and different variations on either side. I like the VN especially. I think it's a pretty menacing looking weapon. And the BS is looking pretty cool too. Although it is at a, kind of a weird angle. It doesn't go straight away from the top of the arm. It kind of bends at a little bit to the outside. But you can see the detail down the side there, where the beam is supposed to shoot out, I guess. So it's looking pretty cool. It would be nice if there's some more inner frame showing there. But all in all, it's not so bad. And again, the VN's pretty, pretty posable. Each of the fingers can do quite a bit of stuff. They can get some interesting poses out of that. Alright, so I'm going to try using the black light on the areas here to see how it looks. I don't have a very good setup for the black light, so not quite as good as it could be. But I think uh, the orange lights up pretty nicely. Looks pretty cool in neon. There on the goatee. On the crotch here looks pretty nice. And on the armored arm VN there. All the inner frame on the bottom. Lights up pretty nicely. And then on the blades coming off of the V or the BS looks pretty nice too. It might look better if it was a little darker and a better lighting setup. But as it is, I think it looks pretty neat. Showing all the detail there on the thrusters and the backpack. I 
the gold on the crest and the uh, chest unit there doesn't light up so it stays kind of dark but I like seeing the psycho frame poking through on the edges of the the head there so that looks pretty nice the backpack is also looking really cool alright so one last thing before I wrap up the review if you were paying attention during the unboxing video when I was looking at the plate layout in front of the manual you would have noticed a bunch of X's through several pieces on the plates and that means those pieces aren't being used in the kit at all so there's a, quite a few leftover pieces some inner frame a couple pieces for the psycho frame and even some blue outer armor there's so much stuff in fact that you can almost make the Banshee OVA version into the Mango version as you can see here looking at both the unicorn mode and the destroy mode it's pretty close to how the original unicorn looked all the armors back to the normal undecorative pieces the heads back to normal or you can choose to use the solid blue faceplate if you wanted to the only things that it's missing are the beam magnum and the hyper bazooka other than that the shield is working just fine the transformation works just the same so it's pretty cool if you want to go back and forth between the DOVA and the Mango version. It's not too difficult to do so either. For the most part, it's just the arms and the head and the chest that need to be changed back and just a few pieces here and there. So it's not all that difficult. If you can't afford to get that Bandai Online exclusive or you missed your chance to, you can kind of do this and almost get away with having the Mango version like this. Alright, so as the Banshee Gundam spins around here in Unicorn Mode and Destroyer Mode, thanks to the magic of split-screen technology, let's talk about a few of the differences between the two modes and the good things and bad things about the kit overall. So as you can see, there's an obvious height advantage in the destroy mode. It's several centimeters taller than the unicorn mode, making it a much more imposing figure. On the Banshee Gundam, I definitely prefer the destroy mode over the unicorn mode, just because of the orange and the blue look really nice together. On the normal unicorn, I like the destroy mode better, because I think the solid white looks pretty cool, and I'm not a big fan of the clear red underneath. So definitely the destroy mode looks nicer, although it is a little more difficult to pose uh, with all of the finicky parts and pieces of the transformation and the extra height definitely makes it a little bit more difficult to post as well because of balance issues and stuff so nothing too bad you just have to be careful when uh, moving stuff around in destroy mode because things are a lot more prone to fall off or get pushed back in place and uh, kind of be frustrating all around so as far as the new armaments on the Banshee I really like both of them the VN and the BS although I think the BS could look a little nicer if it wasn't coming off at an angle from the arm and the VN is pretty nice I like the posability of the fingers and you could probably grasp onto another a master grade kit if you wanted to if you wanted to post some kind of scene or something I'm sure you can get your claws around one kit or another and have it look pretty interesting I really like having the psycho frame next to a black light I wish I had a better setup so I could show it off better to you guys but it's definitely a neat effect having the clear orange kind of glow not quite as much as it is on the anime of course but it's definitely a neat effect if you had the proper lighting set up so the build of the unicorn mold is pretty fun I've done it three or four times now I can almost do it without using a manual which is pretty depressing it is a little more difficult than your normal kits especially in the legs and the chest area a lot of pieces have to go together just so to make it right so make sure to pay close attention to the manual when you're putting everything together otherwise you might have to break something down and put it all back together so a few of the inherent issues in the unicorn mold are posing. You know, the articulation and the knees aren't very isn't the articulation and the knees isn't very good. The kit itself is not meant to be all that uh, acrobatic or posable, especially when compared to the Master Grade Age 1 normal or say the blue frame or red frame astray. Don't expect to get too many crazy poses out of it. It's nice to see these stiff elbows working well with the extra weight of the weapons on the arms. You can get some good poses out, you know, even with the arms straight away from the body and not have too many weight issues. It's a little frustrating to have the sticker on the V-Fin. With all the extra plastic that was included in the kit, it would have been nice if they would have molded one more piece for the V-Fin and put it on the parts for the BS or the VN plates. But other than those few issues, I don't think there's much wrong with this kit. You know, if you, if you don't like the design of the Unicorn, this might be a little... If you don't like the design of the original Unicorn Gundam, this might be just different enough to pique your interest. Or it might not be. So the unicorn mold definitely seems to be a good money maker for Bandai. I wouldn't be surprised if we saw another couple variations out of the kit. Maybe a full umber banshee or something along those lines. I don't know. But it's definitely possible. And I hope to see some more unicorn master grades. The Sananju mold definitely can use some more attention. Maybe this is a Sananju Stein or something like that. I really enjoyed that mobile suit design and the mold. And I, could, I would love to see something else out of that. 
I've yet to put together the Delta Plus. I've got that on my list, and hopefully I'll get to that soon and do a review of that. So Unicorn definitely has a lot of material to make uh, Master Grades out of, so hopefully we'll see some more of those guys, and not just re-releases of previous molds, except for the Sinanju. I can definitely use another Sinanju. Even a perfect grade Sinanju would be amazing. So in closing, I think the Master Grade Banshee is definitely a worthwhile purchase, even if you have a previous version or two of the Unicorn mold. It's different enough to make the build more unique. The color variations are way different and look nice. And having the extra pieces left behind allows you to do some different things with it as well. So there's quite a bit of things you can do with the plastic in the kit. So definitely a worthwhile purchase. So thanks a lot for watching. Hope you enjoyed the review. Let me know what you think of the review and the kit down below with a comment. Like if you do and please subscribe if you haven't done so already. So definitely go to the link below for ggfinite.com and buy your own kit to help support our store. Thank you to Gundam Guy for providing the kits. Stay tuned for more videos and I'll see you soon. You know guys, in the last year or so, I've built the Unicorn Gundam several times. I've built the Master Grade OVA version, the Master Grade Full Armor version, the Banshee in both High Grade Universal Century Destroy Mode and Unicorn Mode, and now the Master Grade Banshee in the OVA version. I really enjoy the Unicorn Mold and I'm happy to build it, but hopefully it'll be a while before I build it again because it's getting a little tired. Oh.